Thank you everyone for this excellent opportunity. My name is Paul Hardister, this is Trevor Rockhill. As an alumnus of GW, it makes me proud to be a part of this competition. And I thank all the organizers as well as the judges for being a part of this excellent opportunity. What we're here today to present is a production company entitled Shoestring Films in which we're going to give a filmmaker and a filmmaking team an opportunity to achieve their dream. To give you a little bit about our background, I currently am a career coach for graduate students and helping them with their career goals in a variety of different industries, including entertainment. I'm also a member of Film Independent and the American Cinematheque, and I've been able to, on my own, make some independent short films, and I've had the fortune of having those films distributed on Link TV and Here TV. And now what I want to do with this new full-time venture is to focus on film full-time and give somebody else that excellent opportunity to achieve their dreams. In order to do this, I needed a strong supporting cast. And what I was looking for in a partner is someone to be able to reach out to one of my key target demographics, the college student. Someone who's good with the numbers. Someone who will be my East Coast counterpart to my West Coast operation. And when I reached out to my network, I was fortunate enough to find my partner, Trevor Rockhill. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, my name is Trevor Rockhill. I'm a current undergraduate student here in the School of Business, studying accounting, and I'll be graduating in 2013. So let's get started. OK, so what's our story? In the next 20 minutes, we're going to take you inside the film industry. We're going to tell you what a filmmaker really needs to make that feature length film. We're going to tell you what we provide and how we cater to those needs. And we're also going to show you our upside for investors and why we are a good investment as a production company. So let me just paint a picture here for you. It's Saturday night. You grab your spouse or your significant other, and you head on down to the local AMC theater. You walk in, and you take a look at the list of films playing for the night. There's a good chance you're going to see a tentpole film. Tentpole films are big budget films that usually cost more than $100 million to produce, and they're intended for a large audience. You also have your low to mid-range films. Um, these are films that can cost anywhere from 15 to $50 million. You also have your independent films. They generally cost under $10 million. A lot of independent films come out of film festivals, uh, such as the F Sundance Film Festival. And you also have your micro-budget films, which generally cost under $100,000. When you look at the list of films all time in terms of their return on investment, the top 20 all fall under the independent or micro-budget film category. And we're specifically targeting the micro-budget film category. So we've seen our movie now. We head out of the theater. And we're walking out the sidewalk. I run into one of my friends. And he's a film student. And he's telling me about this great idea he has for a film and how he really wants to get started. And he says to me, hey, do you have $100,000 so I can get started on this? I say, hey, I'm a GW undergrad. Of course I can't give you $100,000. <laughs> but I do know somebody that can. And that's Shoestring Films. So who is my friend? Well, he's what we call an aspiring filmmaker. Aspiring filmmakers, they have a wealth of ideas. And a lot of them have spent a lot of time and money in film school, on equipment and training. There's just a missing piece to the puzzle for them, which is why they can't get started. And it's just they don't have the money. Um, they need the cash so they can get started and bring their ideas to life. So that's how we come in. This is how we cater to their needs. Um, we've developed an online contest um, which teams of filmmakers consisting of writers and directors can enter together. And it's very similar to an American Idol for filmmakers, if you will. So they'll enter, they'll submit a screenplay, and they'll also submit a budget for their film. Now, you may be thinking, well, aren't there other contests out there similar to this? Well, you might be right, but all of them focus solely on the screenplay, and they, they want to see a good script. Not many of them focus on the budget aspect as well. And that's what kind of separates us from our competitors, is that while we do want a very good qualitative um, and good content in the script, we also want to see that the budget, uh, a proposed budget for that screenplay, and that it can be done at a micro-budget level. So now I'm just going to turn it over to Paul, and he's going to talk to you a little bit more about the details of the contest and how exactly it works. Thank you, Trevor. So what are the benefits as a participant in our contest? Well, to start off, one of the things that Trevor and I really valued about the contest that we're participating in today is the valued feedback every step of the way. 
We got great feedback from the judges, excellent feedback from our mentor, and we would like to provide that. Because most contests collect an entry fee, and then that's the last you hear of them, unless you win, of course. Uh, in our case, we'll be also providing resources, guidance, and business insight. Most film schools will focus on the craft side of the business, but not the money and the distribution side. So that's the kind of coaching they're going to be receiving with our contest. What's the grand prize? What's the big prize? What's the big pull? We will be funding, completely funding, and launching their first film, funding up to $100,000, which is the micro-budget range. The average budget of a micro-budget film is roughly around, from our research, uh, $30,000 to $40,000. Who's our supporting cast? In addition to Trevor, Trevor and I recruited a strong team because, as you know, any production needs a strong supporting cast and crew in order to be successful. So let me introduce you to our cast by walking you through how they're going to participate in the process. So what we're going to do first is work with what our development interns. A lot of times college students who are interested in this industry need that first big entry point into a very competitive field. So they'll be looking for internships. And interns in this field they do something called coverage. They evaluate a script solely based on the creative content, the story, the characters, the crackling dialogue. They'll be able to help us hone it down to the top 25 candidates. And from there, then we'll be able to view the filmmaker's team in terms of their video talent. So they'll upload a video on Vimeo, so there's no shipping costs involved. We'll be able to evaluate the talent by bringing in our next round of judges, the craftsmen the cinematographer, making sure they have a vision, the editor, making sure they can tell a well-paced story, the casting director, how good are they recruiting actors, how good are they working with those actors. And then from there, they move on to the top 10, our elite panel of judges. This is what separates us from the competition. We're the only one focusing on the business aspect. So where other contests stop at the script consultant level, we have four additional layers. So script is still important. We have one of the top screenwriting consultants, according to Creative Screenwriting Magazine, on board. We also have an experienced line, produ uh, line producer that evaluates budgets from the tent poles to the micro budgets. She's done it all. She'll be able to evaluate the script and see is it feasible or not. We also have a distribution consultant. He's worked with over 100 filmmakers uh, especially Sundance winners, to be able to find an audience for their micro-budget film. We also have uh, one of the top entertainment marketing professionals who's launched web campaigns to build an audience for such hit shows as CSI and The Office. And finally, one of the top lawyers, according to Super Lawyers Magazine for the Southern California region. He'll be helping us with form our LLC, the intellectual property, and as well as the rules for the contest. Who's our target market? How big is it? Well, according to the Writers Guild of America, there are 70,000 writers every year or more that register their screenplays in hopes of finding someone that's going to launch their career. According to withoutabox.com, which is a website that's similar to Fandango for movie theaters or PayPal for businesses, where they'll help Trevor and I collect the fees. They track film contests and film festivals, and they have identified that they've got 100,000 100, directors looking to start their careers right now, participating in festivals and contests. There's also 150 film schools throughout the US, and particularly 50 in California alone. So we'll be outreaching to those as well. So what does this mean in terms of the number of entrants? Well, if you look at just the number of directors, if they team up with the writers, that's 100,000 right there. And according to Without a Box, the average number of entries that any given filmmaker will enter per year is 30. And you split that amongst the number of festivals and competitions that are out there now, and you roughly get an average of 1,400 participants for a given contest. So I wanted to test that estimate, so I polled a few starting film competitions, screenplay competitions, and I asked them, what kind of numbers are you seeing? And for screenplays, they're seeing 300. 
for filmmaking over a thousand, so team together, the estimate holds. And for an established film competition like the Nichols Fellowship, they receive up to 10,000 entries per year, so it can be very high. What is our price point? $199. The reason why we have a premium price point is because there's no other competition out right now that allows them to complete a feature film and give them the distribution and marketing to support to make sure they're successful. In terms of the average fees, most film contests charge $50, but again, at most, they might give you an award, maybe a small cash prize, maybe uh, uh, an industry meeting, but no guarantee that there's a film being made. 175 was the highest price point we found. That was the 48-hour film project, which was launched right here in DC, and now is, uh, has exploded all over the world. They have contests everywhere. They charge up to $175 per team, and again, there's not uh, really much of an incentive other than they screen the film in a theater, a local theater, and you have the pleasure of watching it just in that theater alone. The filmmaker just don't even get any revenue from that. We think that this is a reasonable goal because 1400 is actually less than 1% of the market reach. For those of you who aren't familiar with a website called kickstarter.com, kickstarter.com allows filmmakers to essentially post their project online, hold out their virtual cup, and ask for money. Family, friends, strangers. There's 2,500 projects out there right now looking for funding, and the most they're getting is a little over 2,000, which isn't enough to make a film. So that's 2,500 filmmakers right now lined up outside, outside the door looking for help, and we're here to help them. So what's our market reach? How are we going to reach that audience? Starting out with the film schools, reaching out to the career centers, which I'm affiliated with, reaching out to the film professors, also doing PR in some of the major cities that support independent film, New York, LA, DC is another market, film blogs, podcasts, also do interviews with independent filmmakers. Also, web advertising. Now, we're not just going to post it on any site. We're not even going to focus on the websites like Rotten Tomatoes, which are mainly film review websites, because that's for not only the filmmaker, but for the film fan, like yourself. We're focusing on the ready-to-buy market. So the creative screenwriting, the movie maker websites, these are an, uh, an active audience that's going on these websites, looking for tips, figuring out how to make this film. Also, of course, the social media, which Trevor, being the young person that he is, is familiar with all of that. He's going to help be helping me with that. So what does this cost? In terms of getting the project up and running, in terms of the prize money, we'll be able to start the website, get the LLC formed, to then be able to show our next round of investors. There's a film uh, angel investor group called Film Angels based out of San Francisco that particularly focuses on the micro budget film market. So we'll be able to show them that we're up and running and that we have something to demonstrate. Then we have our salaries. So that will also be the prize money, the remaining prize money will be able to get Trevor and I uh, up and running to be able to find the additional money, including the prize money of $100,000. So just over $200,000 for the cost, the return on investment, 38%. And that's just on the fees alone. That's not even counting the film receipts. The film hasn't even been made yet, and we're already expecting profit. In terms of the film revenue, where is that going to come from? This is an additional revenue that we're offering for the investor. So this is an added value for the investor. 40% net receipts from the film. Where are these revenue streams? A lot of people are, might be familiar with one or two of these streams, but there's a wide variety of outlets for content and looking for new content. So in addition to the theatrical, you have the video, which you might be familiar with, but there's a lot more channels now than there have ever been before. Hulu for web streaming, pay-per-view on cable. There are satellite channels that are specifically 24-hour programming for independent films and micro-budget films, like Sundance and IFC. Educational, we might be able to sell the, 
uh, behind the scenes footage to how to make a micro budget film to be able to help students learn, uh, gain some insight in that area. Specialty groups, ancillary, so if we get an independent band that wants to get their music out there, we can get the soundtrack rights and sell those as well. Sponsorships are key. There are sponsorships for this contest. There are a lot of startups that are actually out there right now providing resources for filmmakers like Quick Film Budget, for example, that we can ask to be a part of us that would help the filmmakers create a budget that's never created one before in which we'll be evaluating. Theatrical. According to Baseline Intelligence, for the micro-budget film, the median gross is $100,000. The average is $400,000. So there is a market for this type of product. So to sum it all up, and why I think we're a good investment, instead of explaining it just in my own words, I want to use the words of two prominent CEOs, two industry leaders in the entertainment industry one of which is the CEO of Landmark Theaters that books um, product, particularly the E Street Theater. And what he's found is the specialty films are actually outperforming the mainstream Hollywood films in his theaters. And it's been very consistent over the past few years. And according to Lionsgate, if you want a solid entertainment investment, you got to look at the micro-budget film. Low overhead, little or, uh, smaller risk, and high reward. So in closing, what I want to say to you is that I want you to picture five years from now, two years from now, three years from now, you're watching the Oscars. <laughs> and you see that filmmaker standing up there giving his acceptance speech. You'll be watching it. Maybe you'll be looking at it at the news the next day. And you're going to recognize that person. You're going to say, that person is standing there with that gold statue because today I voted for shoestring films. <laughs> Thank you. Questions from the judges? You had up there, and I think the model, filmmakers enter on average 30 contests per year. Mm -hmm. Or film festivals. Mm -hmm. So this is a person in your demographic, in your yes. target market, mm -hmm. starving artist, and I'm entering 30 contests a year. Mm -hmm. A little less than, well, okay. On average. On average. So that helps you get to your 1,400 entries per contest, which mm -hmm. drives the 278. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds like a lot. But I guess the data just doesn't lie, right? That's the, well, the uh, In terms of the number of entries? Yeah. Well, yes. Well, the, the number per individual. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine entering 30 contests, you know, um, a year. But, but the net net is the one 1,400 per contest sounds like a, 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 a lot. Yeah. Well, the thing about that is the 30, that can range in terms of the entry fee. So not all film contests are on our price level. But again, they might just be, they might use the award that they use, win from that contest that they hope or that festival and leverage that by then going out to an agent or a manager to then try to go that route. Um, and so with the 30, you know, because I asked without a box, you know, how many people in your database, what's the average in terms of what people are doing in terms of this behavior? Right, okay. And the other thing, too, and what, what we wanted to offer the investor is the additional revenue streams. So if, for example, we were slightly off on the entries, um, which we also polled some of the – we actually polled starting film contests, not the ones that are already established. Say, what are you pulling in? And some of those, particularly for the filmmakers, uh, are pulling over 1,000. That would be like the Filmmakers Alliance. I just have one other question sure. just mm -hmm. regards with the T you mentioned a DC based company uh, that was successfully hosting competitions I think all over the world mm -hmm. um, I don't remember the name of the company 48 hour film project 48 hour film mm -hmm. project this is a nonprofit for profit for profit and it's focusing specifically on short films so it's not really a direct competitor but I wanted to mention it in terms of price point and what are their economics uh, are they a venture backed business shareholders angels and how are they doing financially um, well, I don't know the actual history of the, the, this launch of the company. I just know that they started in D.C. about 10 years ago, 
and that now they are all over the world. So, do you know if they're profitable? Do you know? I don't have uh, financials for them. Okay. Yeah. No, another question from the judges. I would agree. The thirty sounds like a high number. So, how are you going to differentiate yourself from all these other contests so that people are going to, you know, that you will get your fourteen hundred uh, that are focused on your particular avenue? Sure. The value add that most contests, and particularly going through this process myself, um, basically that's how I discovered a need in the marketplace. I've entered contests and like I said, you're lucky to even get a thank you letter. You, they announce a winner, you don't get any feedback whatsoever. So we want to be able to add feedback and there's no prize out there right now that's offering to launch a full feature film, uh, their first feature, which is ultimately what they need to start a career. So you'll ultimately have, for that $100,000, you're going to have one winner. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to retain a percentage of the revenue in that film, is that right? Yeah. And how, how willing are people going to be to give that percentage up? Well, as a member of the Institute of Film Finance, I've been attending uh, town hall meetings in terms of learning how <laughs> the finance side works, and that the typical model for a film is if, let's say I had a film and a budget and I pitched you my project and I say, you know, give me $50,000 for this project. Typically how the payout structure work is it's a 50-50 split between the filmmaker and the investor. So what this is, because it's, it's it, what we're gonna do is offer the filmmaker 50%, the, the investment team 50%, 40% for the investors, our investors, and then five and five for Trevor and myself because we'll have equity from our side of the contest in terms of the, the money that we're putting in. So we're actually, we'll be investors, save from the prize money that we win today. One last question. Uh, you said that you will have the feedback at every level. You will have critics, you will have judges and all that. How are you going to compensate them? Is that coming up the same revenue generating or is there is a other source of revenue? Sure. Well, developmental interns, most interns essentially work for free, but we've actually budgeted a small amount. According to Intern Bridge, uh, interns work, you know, $10 an hour in Cal California. So we judged, based on the number of entry fees and the amount of time uh, it would take to review and write coverage, the initial pages, we want to just look at the first 10 pages because at the first 10 pages, you'll be able to tell whether somebody's got the goods or not. So from there, we'll be able to whittle it down to the higher level of judges, which they'll charge a higher rate in terms of the consulting fee. But the financials in our plan actually break down those consulting charges. Judges, you okay? No, no more questions? Great. Thank, Great. You, Thank you guys you very much. Time.